am the universe, the stars and the galaxies, endless possibilities, I am the mystery, I'm the light and the darkness shining bright, I'm the rhythm and the earth and day and night. See the universe. Um, we have seven bodies, yes, seven bodies inside of yourself. Um, we also know the seven bodies of the chakras. So um, everybody knows about the chakra, we're talking about the internal side of yourself, right? When you talk about all those seven chakras, all the way to the crown chakra, we're talking about your internal self, your, that internal energy, right? Now, when we're talking about the seven in one, um, the external you, we're talking about your aura, your aura field fam so your aura field consumes seven different bodies so we're going to be talking about the external you um so i'm going to break it down in depth so uh the goal for this is for you to be able to have a or someone have an under our understanding and overstanding of what the auric feel is and how to build your auric feel. We got some meditation. Physical body. Really. The physical body is your number one. And that's where you can see myself, right? This is my physical appearance. You can see me. It's uh, very low dense. Um, it appears to be standing still. Um, so the, the body, the physical body, is also uh, comprised of cells, right? We have cells, run, billions of cells running through our body, right? So the body is because prize of cells that make up organs like our vital organs right and all the other and all the or, the other organs too just organs in general are made on a cellular level and then we you know, move up to a macro level and we start seeing like our heart our lungs and then it goes uh, it goes a step further and then it goes into our arms or you know our, our head and our eyes you know our teeth all these beautiful uh, things that make up the physical body um, also, too, it's important to note that the physical body has a higher side and a lower side. In fact, I should mention it now. All of the seven bodies that are this, or I should say, the seven external bodies of yourself, all have a higher side and a lower side. And so we'll be talking about that uh, right now we're going to jump into that just right now so your physical body when you get into the higher side it's about having control over right have a conscious control over your physical body having dominion over your physical body and on a cellular level too each cell is very unique and and, and has its own individuality so it's better for you to have control over that cell that makes up over you, that makes up part of you, right? Um, so the higher self uh, allows us to manifest things in our physical body. Now our lower self does that as well too. Uh, this manifests into diseasement, uh, you know, pain, uh, you know, just sickness and illnesses and things of that nature will manifest in the physical body on our lower side, on our higher side. You know, we're exercising, we're getting our body whatever it needs, we're, you know, talking to our body, we're having control over our body in a loving way. Um, so these are things that, um, that you know, the physical body consists of. You got your higher side, your lower side, your higher side, you're going to be doing things that benefit the body um, on the positive side. And then on the lower side, you'll have some things that will uh, not be beneficial as far as terms as how you feel. Okay, so the physical body is very important, very unique, and um, it allows us to manifest from the higher side to the lower side. The physical body is that main body that allows you to express things from your higher side and from your lower side. So the physical body is definitely that, you know, it's the, what you call it, it's the, it's the shot collar, right? So... Yeah, physical body is on point. All right, fam. So now we're talking about the emotional body. The emotional body is the second body. This is your external self. So you have your physical body, but then outside of my physical body, about an inch or two, I have my emotional body. And the best way I can give you an example is that if you ever walked into a room and you felt somebody being angry, you could feel the anger and then 
they, you're probably on the other side of the room and they're walking in the door, you can feel the anger, right? So that is an example of the emotional body, being able to feel emotions, um, not just other people's emotions, but more importantly, your emotions. So the emotional body is that body that harbors how you feel about things. How do you feel about yourself? How do you feel about things um, outside of yourself, right? The emotional body is where we could send, let's just say, for example, we feel emotionally, um, say we feel happy, right? We feel excited about working out. That manifested to the physical body. So I'm showing you how they're connected. The two bodies are connected, right? And then that's also, you know, on the other side, uh, you have your, your lower side. Let's just say you feel, <sighs> I hate working out. So you hate working out, you know, and that will manifest into your physical body. Your body will look like you hate working out uh, versus uh, you love working out uh, and it will transpire into that too if that's what the case is. And so uh, one of the things that I love about the universe is that the universe always says yes. So we're the one who makes the decisions, right? Uh, and determines that something's good or bad for us, right? So with the emotions, uh, you have your high side and your low side. Having your higher emotions such as unconditional love, joy, peace, uh, gratitude. These are your higher emotions that you would love to feel on a daily basis. Then you have your lower side of the emotions where you might be angry, frustrated, you know, have anxiety. These are emotions that bring your emotional body down and then they can manifest into your physical body and allow your physical body to have some negative impacts to have, such as what we talked about before, uh, manifest into uh, diseases or you know, illnesses and or you know, headaches, pains, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's very important to realize that all of the external bodies are all connected in some way or another. Just like we all are reflections of each other some way or another, whether you like it or not. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the next body. All right. So let's jump into the third body. So the third body is your mental body. Yes. So your mental body is where you learn how to have clear clarity. Actually, I should say, so let me say that differently. The mental body is actually where you, where your thoughts come from. So you have your thoughts, um, it's where you develop how you think about things, right? How you, so you have your feelings on your second body, how you feel about things, but this is more of your logic, where you get a lot of your logic and reasoning from. Uh, it's from the mental plane. Uh, the mental plane is very cool um, because it allows you to manifest things about your thoughts. So you can have thoughts on, hey, if I was to work out more, then um, I will feel better. And then, so then that will go into the emotional body. Okay, um, I feel good when I work out. So then that mo that goes into your physical body and you start to look good like you thought you would, right? So you manifest your, uh, you manifest your, your thoughts, okay, through the mental plane. Now the mental plane also is home to the ego. The ego is where, <laughs> Yes, I said it, the ego, the ego is where the, where the ego, it lives in your mental plane. So the ego pretty much has its own setup in your mind and it's there to dominate. Okay, the ego is no joke, it's there to dominate, it's there to uh, take over the system if you allow it. So the ego must be um, controlled in a loving way um, because it is part of yourself. I know that we always talk about killing the ego, but however, we got to be able to keep the ego in check, all right? Um, so, and what I mean by this, for example, uh, the mental plane, you have your higher side and your lower side, right? Again, you have your higher thoughts, thoughts that lead you to higher and better beneficial manifestations, and then you have your lower thoughts that lead you to, uh, you know, undesirable uh, manifestations, all right? So very important to realize that the ego may 
come in because it's looking at, at things outside of you. So if it's looking, if it's in a room and it's looking at everyone else that has, you know, certain jewelry, let's just see everybody got Gucci on, they got Gucci clothes on, Louis Vuitton, but then you come in your Walmart gear, right? So you might feel, uh, the ego might be like, oh, they think they better than me. So it might make you act out differently, right? They may make you do things that out of jealousy or things out of protection to protect yourself from being exposed for not wearing what everybody else is wearing, okay? This is like peer pressure type stuff, okay? But believe it or not, this stuff is what people are experiencing every day. Um, we want to fit in with our coworkers. We want to fit, fit in with our family. We want to fit in with our friends. Um, but in the, in, in the meantime, this causes for us to uh, have those manifestations on the, you know, on the emotional side and the physical and the physical side too. So the mental plane is very dope. However, it's the home of the ego. Ego has to be in check. Also too, uh, this is where you start to develop your logic and reasoning. Sometimes you might see some things um, and have thoughts about it. And um, this is where you'll develop the logic reasoning about how things work in your life and stuff. Do you get an attitude for certain things? This is all coming from the mental plan. Okay, then it trickles down into how you feel about it. Then that trickles down into your physical. Okay, so we just talked about three of the external bodies right now. We talked about the mental, the emotional, and the physical, and they're all three connected because your thoughts will lead to how you feel, and how you feel will lead to how your physical manifestation reacts, okay? So definitely uh, very important, fam. So thank you guys for tapping, uh, tapping into that. We're gonna go ahead and move it to All right, so the fourth body. body is the intuition body. The intuition body is one of the bodies that pretty much um, holds your abstract thinking. This is where you get that gut feeling about things that you might not be able to think about logically. Like some sometimes logically things that don't make sense, but internally in your intuition, it makes sense. Okay, um, I can give an example of the intuition, um, how this works. Um, how this works is for example, let's just say that you're on your way to work and you always turn right. But then you get some a gut feeling at the intersection to where you're supposed to turn right, you get this gut uh, this gut feeling about maybe I should go left, right? So what happens if so what happens if you make your decision if you go left? Guess what? You might have avoided some stuff. If you go right, you might have ran right into something that your spirit or your inter your intuition was trying to tell you. Your intuition was saying, hey, don't go right. You're gonna be late for work. You already have um, you already have one strike. Or you, you, you only have one more strike left before they terminate you. So you better definitely um, don't go right. And you t so let's just say, uh, I always go this way. This is the way I always go. This is easy for me. I don't want to spend extra gas going that way. That way it's just a little bit longer. So let's just say you hit that right. When you hit that right, nothing goes right for you, right? You know, you get pulled over, a car accident, you know, you know, something that makes you late, right? This is you not following the intuition. The intuition was telling you. Go left. Hey, I know, I know that it's gonna be longer. I know that you ain't got no gas, but I think you should go left. You should go left. Go left. And you st and let's just say you don't. You run into that undesirable manifestation. Now, say you go left. It works in your favor. You get to work on time, and then you find out, hey, I have some extra money in my account because the intuition allows you to have higher abstract thinking more than you could logically. Logically, right? Let's go to the mental plane. On the mental plane, logically it says, it doesn't make sense to go right. It only makes sense. I mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense to go left. It doesn't make sense to go right. It only makes sense to go right because you have this much gas, you have much, this much money, and you, have, and you have this going on with your job. So you, it only makes sense to go right. That is the mental plane telling you that. However, on your intuition and that gut, you're like, something tell me to go left. I should just go left. I don't know why I'm supposed to go left, but I just need to go left. And this is building trust in your intuition so that way you're able to 
maneuver in the field out here, right? What they call the cutting edge, right? So very, very key lessons here about the intuition, about following the intuition because it could lead you into things that you may not be able to think about logically or even even have visions of right now. So sometimes you just gotta trust that intuition, right fam? And so you have your higher side of trusting it, then you have your lower side, okay? Then it all manifests through how you feel about things, you know, what you think about it, and then it manifests manifest into your physical. In this situation, the physical, if we went and went right, then uh, we would have a physical manifestation of us being late and feeling disappointed or feeling angry and frustrated. You know, then if we had went left, we would feel happy. We would feel more trusting, trusting. We would feel more empowered to trust ourselves, right? So definitely key points in the intuition. Okay, now the fifth body is the will body. The will body is where you get to use your will put your will upon the world your will upon others um we use our willpower when we're trying to get something done we use our willpower when we're simply um left in love with each other you know with another person so uh, we're putting our will on them things that we desire we're putting our will upon them uh if they agree okay so your free will is allowing you to do what you feel uh, your spirit wants to do right so your willpower is very important. It has a high side and a low side. The willpower has also been known to have control of the people. Say, let's, let's just talk about a near-death experience. Near-death experience, a person is on the brink of death. They should be dead, right? But based upon the physical body. But however, they have the willpower to hold on and then they survive. They overcome whatever happened to them, the traumatic experience that happened to them, they overcome it. They overcome it. And that's because the will to stay here on earth, to stay alive, manifests into the physical body, even though the physical body might have been went through a traumatic experience or trauma. Okay, so um, very important to know that the willpower is, uh, is key into moving you forward. Um, the willpower gives you will to be able to move forward, to be able to, uh, for example, if you cho ever chose a profession or a career, that was your will. That was my will to choose that career, right? That was my will to go. When we talked about in the intuition body, when we talked about going left and right, right gets you late, left make you get to work on time. When we talk about that, how does that come into play? When the willpower, well, I use my own free will to go right. <laughs> Nobody forced me to do it. And so my will was to do that. And so it's very important that in spirituality that we do not impede on other people's free will. Doing that is like the number one, if you want to call it sin or violation, you just don't impede on other people's free will. Okay, So your will is about allowing you to move forward. When you get married or join forces with someone, this is joining your wills together. Sometimes you can um, procreate with will or you can just simply, you know, hey, this is my way or the highway type of thing. And then, you know, you fall in line to that. That means you're going to be using somebody else's will to survive as well. Okay, so very important stuff here, fam. So willpower uh, allows you to move forward and allows you to be able to express yourself and, uh, and then it trickles down to your intuition, trickles down all the way down to your mental, and how you feel about it, and then your physical body found. Sixth body right. is actually the soul body. The soul body is where you get the I am. I am that I am. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can make you. Nobody can break you. Okay. It's just, you are just what you are. You say you are. Okay. You are that you are, right? I am that I am. Okay. Nobody can change it. Okay, and that's one of the things that I love about the soul body because it allows you to become who you want to be, who you desire. It allows you to experience uh, things from your higher self, right? Uh, you're at the sixth body now. So if you say that you are 
um, you know, I am spiritual, that will trickle down into your will. Your will is going to start making opportunities come so that way you can be spiritual. Then you're going to get intuitions about doing things that make you spiritual. Then you're going to have thoughts about spirituality. You're going to have feelings about it. Then it's going to go down to your physical where you might start dressing spiritual. You know, might start wearing things that are spiritual. Uh, you might look spiritual to other people. They might be like, oh, that guy's a spiritual guy, you know. This is things that how this works, okay? So the soul body is trickling down all the way down into the physical body, which is this. Um, and I wanted to say too, I, I want to kind of chime back in. Um, we talked about each sign having a higher sign and lower sign. Well, when you combine all of those seven bodies, um, three of them are the lower side and four of them are the higher side. You start your higher side at the, um, at the will body. So your lower sides are your physical, your emotion, and your mental bodies, okay? Now your, your higher, your higher selves, okay, out of those seven bodies are gonna start out your intuition, your will, your soul, and then the next body after that, okay? So I wanted to make sure that I note that. So when I talk about the energies coming down from the soul body or the the uh, intuition or will body, all that means is that the energy is flowing down all the way down until it gets to the physical body, making a manifestation of, of that energy. And keep in mind, we're all talking about energy. So the soul body energy is the energy that you embody to, to uh, create I am, whatever you say you are. Okay? The most powerful words is I am and whatever is followed after that. I am trustworthy. You will start to feel trustworthy. You will have a will that yields towards trustworthiness. You will start to have thoughts like being trustworthy. And it keeps going on and on down to the physical body and people be, look at you and be like, hey, that's a guy I can trust, right? So um, very important stuff with the, the soul body. Now the lower side of the soul body is not being able to say I am, you don't know who you are, you're confused, um, you're still having some questions about what you want to be doing and stuff like that. So on the lower side, that trickles down into your will. So now your will is confused. So you do a little bit of this and that, but it doesn't contribute to you finding about you know what what your will is. But then it goes down into uh, to the the intuition. The intuition is going to be confused because it doesn't know which way to go, which way to navigate. So it's going to be confused. Then your logic will be confused because you have thoughts that will be confusing, feelings that are confusing. And you can see the picture, it goes down to the physical body. We have a confused person where we start to look confused um, out in the field or the cutting edge when we're out here dealing with one another in the matrix, okay? Um, so the, the lower side is pretty much not knowing who you are. Okay? You just let someone decide who you are pretty much. Being on a program, um, kind of being on autopilot. Being on autopilot and not knowing who you are is the lower side of the soul body. And, and on the higher side is you proclaiming who you are and allowing that to flow down all the way to your physical existence. And the seventh body that we have, uh, this seventh external you that we have is considered the divine body yes we are all divine being but we have to proclaim to be right so divine being is also about being one realizing we're all connected realizing that we are all reflections of each other that if i kill uh, this then that kills me because it's pretty much one and one okay so oneness is what we're talking about when it comes to the divine body when we have our higher selves with the divine body, we are being more conscious and we're being more protective and loving and caring uh, and empathetic to other people and other things around us that we're connected with. We don't just look at grass as just grass. We look at it as a being. We don't look at stones as just a, a rock. It is a being with a consciousness. We look at everything being connected. Um, and as I spoke before, all of the seven bodies are all connected in one way or another. And so the, the higher self of the divine body is about actually realizing, uh, having actualization and realization that this is actually all connected. Okay, and you're a part of it. Okay. Now the lower side is realizing that we're not connected and you're not having these experiences about us. You know, the rock is just a rock. You can crush it. You can, you know, a tree is just a tree. Who, who cares? An animal is just an animal. People are just people. These are things are, are 
that are on the lower side of the divine body where we do not realize that we're connected. We do not realize that we are all the same. We just think about individuality. And so it's pretty much duality. There's no oneness. Just only separate left or right, up and down, right or wrong. Okay. So that is the dangers of dealing with the divine body on the lower self. And this all trickles down into your physical being as well.